Before starting your installation, there's a few things you want to get sorted first. Clear your area of any plants or debris, then prepare a suitable base for your shed. For this video, we're using a pressure treated wooden framework to protect the shed from damp and insects. We would always recommend installing on a dry day with a minimum of two people. For this installation, you will need a screwdriver, a drill, a hammer, a tape measure, a ladder and a Stanley knife or cutting tool. Start off by removing the transport blocks from each of the panels. They're nailed in so give them a good knock with a hammer. Then place your floor panels over the base making sure the bearers line up with the supports. Screw diagonally through each floor section into the framing of the other to join the two panels. We're fitting the doors first so that you can make sure that the hinges are level. Lay out your door gable flat on the ground and place the doors within the opening. Line them up flush with the frame and place the hinges at the top and the bottom so they line up with the framing nails. Make sure to pre-drill all screw holes throughout this installation. It can take time but will prevent unnecessary damage to the timber. Secure the hinges in place using 30mm screws and repeat for all four. Start the main body of the installation with the rear gable and one of the sides to form an L-shaped join. Make sure the framing pieces are firmly together and flat on the floor. Secure the panels at the top, middle and bottom of the framing with screws and repeat this for the opposite side. Attach the other side panel in the exact same method. You can now secure the door gable in the same way too, screwing at the top, middle and bottom of each side into the framing. With all the walls up, it's time to work on the roof. Place the ridge bars together and align the plate over the joint. Pre-drill for each of the holes and then screw through into the timber on all three sides. Place an L bracket at each end of the bar and secure with screws. Align this with the top of the apex and screw in place into the vertical framing. Secure a truss bar at equal intervals between the ridge bar and the walls with screws. Place a truss block beneath the bar to support it and secure into the panel framing. Screw down through the truss bar into the block to hold it in position. Repeat this for all six bars, making sure they are an equal distance between the panel frame. With the ridge bar and trusses installed, the next step is to affix the roof boards. Slide the roof panel up onto the gables until it reaches the ridge and secure in place into the framing below. This will create an overhang for your felt. Repeat this for the other panels. Place an eave support block between the two trusses and secure with screws. Repeat this for all three blocks. Slide an eave frame under the edge of the roof board, making sure that it is flush at the end and sides. Secure the frames along the edge through the roof board and repeat on both sides of the shed. Now that the roof is on, you want to secure the framing of your building down to the floor to prevent any movement. Pre-drill and screw down into the framing at equal intervals using 50mm screws. When felting the roof, you want to either measure the length of your roof with a tape measure, or as we've done here, you can roll it out along the length of your building and cut to size. Use a Stanley knife or cutting tool to cut the felt for a nice clean finish. Roll the felt out along the roof and position it so that you have at least 2 inch overhang on all sides. Tack the felt at the two top corners to prevent movement and then secure all around, making sure that the felt is pulled firmly to prevent wrinkles. Repeat this for the other side of the roof and then roll out your third strips along the apex. These should overlap your two pieces and can then be tacked along the length of the roof on either side. With the roof finished, it's time for the trims. For the fascias, fold the felt down so that it is sandwiched firmly between the fascia and the edge of the roof. Secure these at each end and the middle and repeat for all four fascias. Position a finial over the fascia gap at each end and secure with screws. Don't worry if some felt overhangs under your fascias, this can simply be cut away using a knife. Align the corner trims over the side panel framing and then secure in place at the top, middle and bottom with 30mm screws. Repeat this for all four corners and then the two side joints. 
For the windows, you're going to need to affix the framing on each side of the window opening with screws. You can then insert the plastic glazing strip. Place a piece of styrene in the window frame and cover the edge with the framing piece. Secure this through into the framing behind to sandwich the glazing in. Repeat this for the other window before securing both with the centre framing piece. We'll remove the plastic coating later. Place the door blocks at the top, middle and bottom of one door, with another at the middle of the opposite door. A turn button can then be installed on the top and bottom blocks of the slave door. The internal door beading needs to be installed just on the inside of the door frame. Secure this at the top, middle and bottom on each side of the door. The door strips need to be placed over the door gap with the shorter strip at the top. Make sure they are flush at the ends to leave a gap between them. Secure into the master door along each strip, lining the screws up with the internal framing. The last turn button is installed on the slave door between the two strips with a black 30mm screw. To remove the window covering, score around the edge of the window framing with a sharp knife on both of the inside and outside of the window glazing. You should then be able to peel the protective plastic off the window. Now that your shed is installed, you want to treat it with a good quality timber preservative to keep it protected throughout the year. For more installations, please check out the other videos on our channel.